I've got this machine set hot enough that I can hold a pretty darn tight arc without the rod sticking, at least once I get it started. You have to sort of long arc it a little bit, usually to get a, a, to get a good arc started, but then you want to be able to hold a nice tight arc. So I'm using a tight arc. I'm not using much drag angle either. And I stopped because I want to show you now a little example of how not to weld overhead with 7018. All I'm going to do here is hold a much longer arc. And this is kind of where I really screwed up when I was learning. And you can see big balls of fire just kind of big blobbing down and hitting my feet and everything. And this, is, this was me in welding school. Just burned myself all up. And I didn't understand at that time that a tight arc would prevent this from happening. So you need a tight arc, not excessive rod angle, and enough amperage so that the rod won't stick when you hold the tight arc. And that's just a mess right there. Undercut, slag, I had all kind of BBs hitting my, near my feet. And all I did differently here, didn't, didn't touch the machine. All I did is tighten that arc up and everything's going a whole lot better. So this is the last half of the weld here. See, I'm not using much rod angle here at all because toward the end of the rod, even at 125 amps, you, you can set up a little something called arc blow and you really have to hold a tight arc. And I've found that holding a, that a straight in angle like this instead of rod angle kind of helps prevent undercut toward the end of a weld like this. Okay, this is quarter inch thick metal and that's one single pass in there and sometimes that might be enough. But this is a practice piece. So the idea here is to get the most out of the metal and, and we're gonna stack a lot of beads in here. The first bead is gonna be using an angle about like this. And I'm going to try to overlap it more than halfway. And then the, anytime I'm making that last tie-in bead to the top member, I'm going to point it up more like this. To, that'll, help, that'll help placement, and it'll also help with undercut. We'll get started here. And you can see I'm, I'm overlapping more than halfway. I'm just leaving just a little bit of that first bead even, even is going to be visible. And that's just kind of the way it, it kind of needs to be in order to stack things in there and have them come out with an even leg fillet. So I'm not doing a whole lot of intentional movement here. Uh, any movement is just me shaking around a little bit. I'm just trying to kind of hold steady, maybe just make the tiniest of little circles, but that's not, that's not really uh, necessary at all. It's just strictly a, a drag rod. You can make slight manipulations, slight side to side, but dragging it works just fine too. Now you may notice this is hot rolled steel. There's mill scale coating on it and I didn't clean anything at all. And for, for the sake of practice, honestly, if you can make a weld like this with mill scale on it and not leave undercut, then it's pretty easy to do when you clean that mill scale off. So if you're welding a bunch of practice joints, I personally think it's, you know, it's, it's fine just to, to not clean them. In the field, if you're making a coated weld and it's gonna be inspected and everything, it always welds better, even though it's stick welding. And yes, it'll burn through mill scale and all that. It'll weld better without that mill scale on there, and you'll be less likely to get undercut. So that second bead, that last bead in this case, uh, this is the third pass. So it's the last bead of this layer. I'm really, I'm really angling it up to the top member and all the while trying to hold a nice tight arc. And we're going to put three more over top of this. And basically, that's just lather, rinse, repeat, you know, from here on out. But I will show them. But I won't show a whole lot other than these arc shots. So same thing. I'm trying to overlap just a little bit more than halfway toward the upper, upper side of this thing. Just going along as, with my travel speed slow enough that I don't leave undercut. Then I want to overlap halfway over top of that one. Trying all the while to keep my arc length nice and tight and my rod angle pretty consistent. Now, right here, I didn't think I had that much rod angle going on. So, you know, it, for me anyway, I've always got more than I think. So if I'm, if I'm making this well, then I think I've only got 5 degrees. I probably got 10 or 15. But you'll also notice that's changing just a little bit as I go here. Not necessarily intentional. I don't guess it's changing a whole lot. There's a lot of forgiveness on, on rod angle. If you get it too steep, the bead will crown up on overhead and it will tend to mound up and, and you'll get some of that fallout. 
But this is not bad. This is working for me anyway. Watching the top edge of that puddle going slow enough not to leave any undercut, or I'm trying not to leave any undercut. So that was a single stringer pass, then two stacked over that, and then three stacked over that. And the thing that jumps out at me here is uh, I got lots of room for improvement. I need to go practice some more. But the biggest question is, did it penetrate? Did I have the amp set high enough to get good penetration? So we'll do a cut and etch test here, and we'll see. That's the only way to really tell for sure. And it looks like money. For this video, we're going to use up all these leftover rods from a previous video, and so there's going to be a lot of restarts, but that's a good thing. Learning how to make a good restart on an overhead weld is important. 165 amps. That is about mid-range for a 532-7018. Here's the rule of thumb, in my opinion, anyway, for stick welding overhead. Set amperage high enough so that when you hold a tight arc, the rod won't stick, then hold a tight arc. Rod angle also matters. So you don't want to get crazy with it. Pretty much a dead straight in will work. Just a very slight drag angle like this seems to work out pretty well as well. If you get too crazy with the angle, the bead will crown up. If you push, sometimes the slag will run ahead of you, and that'll be a problem too. Just making a little short run here, this side of the T-joint already had about a two inch weld on it. So first thing we're doing is just tying into that, get the machine set right. Seemed like the amperage was set okay there. Now we'll carry on and make a full stringer pass on here so that we can stack two beads over top of that. Here's a good example of how to make a restart and keeping all of the arc strikes to where they will be welded back over. Arc strikes are considered a defect. There are areas where you could have porosity. There are also areas where the metal heated up very rapidly and cooled very rapidly, and they can be brittle, they can be stress risers. Inspectors don't like them. It's just good practice to strike the arc and weld back over the arc strikes. Holding a nice tight arc here with not much rod angle, just a little bit. A little bit of a drag angle. Notice Andrew is propping here. He's got a, a pair of vice grips clamped, and he's just kind of holding on there like a stirrup or a handle on a bus. The stand is not anchored at the top, so it's wiggling around a little bit, so Andrew holds on to the vice grip to kind of steady everything up, steady himself up, steady the stand up, everything. Let's take a look at another restart here. Starting ahead of the crater by a good inch, kind of long arcing it, getting into that crater, and then just moving on and welding over top of all the previous arc strikes. It also lets the tip of the rod heat up a little bit and kind of prevents porosity. 7018 is a low hydrogen rod, so they should be kept in a, in a rod oven. And you can definitely tell a difference when they are kept in a rod oven versus ones that are left out. All right, now, rod angle is not going to change a whole lot for this, for this second bead. Everything's going to stay the same. The objective here is to kind of overlap that first bead by probably two-thirds to three-quarters. A little slight drag angle of the rod holding a nice tight arc. Trying to just be steady and use the, the toes of the weld for kind of a guideline to, to make a straight bead. Again, we're using partial rods here, so we're having more restarts than usual. With full rods, it would probably only take one restart to make the whole distance. Here we go again, another restart, and again welding over all the restart trash that happens when you do make a restart. Weld all the way to the end and then wrap it some, and this is where you have to kind of plan ahead and make sure you have enough rod to do that. A little bit different rod angle on the very last bead or the third bead, almost straight up because you don't want undercut on that top member. So that's where the rod changes on that last bead when you're tying into the top member. And you can also notice that it's, it's traveling just a little bit slower than the other beads because there's just a little valley there. There's more of a little groove to, uh, to hold the bead. 
and it takes a little bit more to fill it in so that in the, in the end you'll have sort of an even fillet. So Andrew is just working it just a little bit. Not a whole lot of a whole lot of rod oscillation going on, but just a little bit. Personally, I usually shake just a little bit on something like this, so making a slight oscillation, a little tiny uh, cursive ease or tiny circles or something like that tends to help me. It help, helps play the light around a little bit so I can see where I'm going, but you don't have to. You can just do a straight drag. We've got the arc force set to max on this machine, so instead of using 10 or 20 more amps, we're just using 165 amps, but with the arc force maxed out, and that allows you to hold a pretty tight arc without sticking the rod, without using excessive amperage. If I were using an eighth inch uh, electrode on this joint, I'd be at about 125 amps, or 165 for this 532 electrode. Things seem to be going pretty darn well. Really, really watching that edge of the bead where it's tying into the top member to go slow enough not to leave undercut. And again, welding all the way to the end, wrapping that corner. Welds like this are super common on structural steel as well as structural steel for pipe supports. Had a lot of requests to do 532 rod because a lot of people are being required to test on 532 as well as use 532 718 in the field. So I hope this helps somebody. Hey, this video is brought to you by my online store at weldmonger.com. I'd be very grateful if you'd head over there and just take a look around. We're adding new products practically every week. One of the things a lot of people ask me is when's the next DVD coming out? And I haven't made one since 2019, but I still have those available. And they serve a really good purpose for schools and places where they have really crappy internet. This is one of the best DVDs I ever made. If you're struggling with things like putting in a root, a 6010 root in a pipe, uphill or downhill, 6G, 5G, this one's got the good stuff on it, the keys to the Lamborghini. This one can help you pass a test. I've also got the best of TIG Volume 2. If you're only interested in TIG welding, it's got everything from steel to stainless to chromoly aluminum on it, even some titanium. Stuff that you've seen me use in videos more than likely. So, again, I'd appreciate it if you'd visit weldmonger.com and check it out.